Episode 165, Intimidation Tactics. Just as Aiden was hailing a cab on East Street, Chrissy and the rest of the group were standing anxiously behind the stage at the Otis High football field. Chrissy looked around frantically, scanning the crowd for Aiden. He wouldn't stand us up at the last minute, would he? She asked nervously. It's seven o'clock. We're up soon. On stage, one act followed another. Chrissy examined the program with mounting dread. With each passing performance, it was getting closer and closer to their turn to walk up the stairs. Where the hell was Aiden? Next up is Chad Fortenberry. He'll be performing a solo for us. Jaden, Chloe, and Chrissy felt sick to their stomachs. Chad was the last performance before theirs. On stage, Chad exchanged a silent look with a member of the jury, a middle-aged woman in a fur coat. It was Chad's aunt, Miss Fortenberry, and one of the school's five senior board members. Miss Fortenberry turned to face the other members of the jury. Some of you may recognize my nephew, Chad, she said, smiling. Mr. Wiles and a few others nodded their heads politely. Oh, I see, said Mr. Wiles. Chad stood confidently on stage and then began to sing. His voice surprised everyone. The judges were very impressed. They smiled to themselves as they filled out the scoring column on the sheet of paper before them. Everyone gave him high marks. Miss Fortenberry glanced over at the scoring sheets of the judges beside her. She smiled with satisfaction. After a burst of applause, Chad bowed slightly and exited behind the curtain on stage. Behind the curtain, Chad glanced around discreetly and then turned toward a shadowy corner. There, a small figure was waiting for him. A thousand dollars. It's yours, Chad whispered. Remember, this is between you and me. As far as you know, that was me doing all the singing out there. You tell anyone anything different and you'll regret it. The thin figure, barely discernible in the darkness, gave a small nod. Chad walked to the edge of the stage and made his way down the stairs. At the bottom of the steps, he saw Chrissy, Jaden, and Chloe, all three nearly shaking with nerves. He was surprised for a moment and then realized what was going on. Yo, he blurted out with his characteristic bluster. What are you guys up to? Where's your pal? He seemed to revel in their despair. Oh no, did he get scared? That's a shame. He missed my song and everything, and I'd really wanted him to see that. The group stared at Chad in glum silence. There wasn't much they could say. They could hear the host introducing the next performance. Next, Please give a warm welcome to Jaden, Chloe, Chrissy, and Aiden. They will be singing the song, You at the Same Table. The applause was muted. The competition was more than halfway done, and the enthusiasm of the audience had begun to wane. Many students were playing with their phones, eating snacks, and generally disregarding the performances at this point. Most of the performances had been pretty mediocre. The audience didn't have high expectations but Mr. Wiles was sitting on the edge of his seat. His eyes were alight. Behind the curtains, the host was trying to urge Chrissy and the others to step out. Don't worry about your missing member. You can do it without him. Now's the time. Let's go. Chrissy bit her lip. How could they possibly perform without their most important member? But I don't know the piano part, Jaden murmured in distress. Chrissy looked at the worried faces of Jaden and Chloe, and decided it was up to her to take charge. Forget the piano part, she said. Let's just do our best. She grabbed their hands and pulled them to the front of the stage. Just then, Aiden's taxi arrived at the school gates. He jumped out of the car and ran towards the brightly lit football field. He just hoped he wouldn't be too late.